so it's 926. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Nancy DeCatch Caregiver Show, and Happy New Year to all of you. I know it's almost February, but I uh, haven't been uh, in the studio to do the show because I was one of those individuals that was so lucky to get the flu. And so I missed two shows, and I want to thank Ron for sitting in for me and being the host as I was gone, and glad you're here again. And thank you for filling in. And You're more than welcome. Yeah. And, and it was quite an opportunity. Yeah, it, it, we have a good show, and uh, we're happy that we're in the new year, and the show is continuing, and our audience is growing, and we're just really thankful for that. But um, the weather's quite different today, quite warm. I don't even know what the temperature is out there, but it's quite warm. And well, I think they predict that it might be in the 50s, I believe. 50s? that's pretty strange for January and apparently it's going to get cold this weekend and you know this weather um, is is the recipe for illness lots of flus lots of upper respiratory problems a lot of things and so uh, we need to concentrate on staying well and the caregivers need to stay well uh, so that they can um, continue to do what they do and care for another person but it's really hard sometimes. I know when my husband was alive, I used to um, have to put a, a neosporin type of a, as an ointment. And it's not really neosporin, but it was something like that. I don't even remember the name, but we put that on a Q-tip, and I would have to put it in my nose. And you know, that's what transplant patients did uh, so I could stay well in case the heart came in and we had to go. But if I had a sniffle, and he would get a sniffle, and then that opportunity for an organ transplant wouldn't happen so it's very important to stay well so if you have children uh, pump them with vitamin C and and yourself as well but a lot to cover today just odds and ends of, of things because I haven't been in the studio for about four weeks and uh, some things I want to talk about um, first I want to share with all of you that the symposium that uh, we are hosting for May 18th at the Bertrand Expo Center uh, is picking up speed and we are getting vendors and sponsors every day. We picked up another one today and we're thankful for that. And uh, we wanna encourage you, if you are a vendor, or if you have a business, I'm sorry, if you have a business that has something to do with uh, home care or personal care for a caregiver or if you have uh, just something uh, for the caregiver, if you are maybe a manicurist or a uh, esthetician or something on that line, something has to do with relaxation or essential oils or something, we encourage you to go to the website and register to participate in this statewide symposium. Uh, it, you want to go to www.caregiverconvention.org and sign up there. If you're not able to uh, register online you can always send a registration form to my P.O. Box which is P.O. Box 208 Sorts Creek Michigan 48473 and you want to address that to the NDCI which is short for Nancy D. Catch Caregiver Institute the prices are on the website you can pick and choose what you'd like we just have two the sponsorship is $1,000, and if you'd like to be a vendor, it's three fifty, dollars and you get a lot of goodies that go along with that. The great thing about it is we have a great lineup for the educational side. Following the educational side, we are going to have a VIP cocktail hour, and then we're going to have a really great retreat for the caregivers, a lot of fun night, um, music, and food, and just all kinds of really neat fun things to do for the caregiver and uh, a lot of other things are going on up in the Bertrand area one of which is uh, Frankenmuth is going to be hosting their uh, worldwide beer festival so if you like beer uh, you can check out Frankenmuth as well but there's all kinds of neat things going on we're really excited about it and I just can't thank uh, the mid-Michigan uh, businesses and the chambers of commerce and uh, even ours right here in Genesee County for the tremendous support and outreach that they have uh, brought to us so that our event is successful so I want to thank 
everybody out there for your support. So we have a good lineup. So uh, yes, we do, and you know we even had some uh, state legislators that will that will be attending or, or have committed to attend. So yeah, that's going to be excellent also. Yeah, we uh, we have Tim Skubik coming out of Lansing who's a journalist and he has a TV show on PBS called Off the Record and he's really a phenomenal individual you know he's been in the business over 30 years and won many many awards for his journalism but he puts the politicians in the hot seat that's how I call it and he really um, questions them about some things and what's great about it is he has agreed to come to our symposium and facilitate a discussion uh, for us caregivers. He's going to represent us and ask the tough questions that maybe um, some of us want to know the answers to. But we have uh, the politicians that are going to be at the uh, panel speaking will be Senator Khan, and uh, we have Woodrow Stanley, Representative Woodrow Stanley, we have Representative Jim Ananick, Representative Stacy Irwin Oaks, Representative Pam Ferris, and Representative, and I cannot think of his first name, but his last name is Colton. And all of these individuals bring something um, special to the table, but they're strong figures in the community, and they really understand the laws that exist now, and they're going to explain some things to us, and I think it's going to be extremely uh, educational and beneficial to us caregivers because we're so busy doing our jobs we don't have time always to pay attention to what's going on and then you know you sit around on your coffee clutches and it becomes a gripe session about the government you know and, and all of that but you know it's time to stop griping it's time to take some action and so this is an opportunity for the caregivers to get together and uh, you know ask those questions intelligently just as we discussed earlier it was election year last year and and we really um, tried to make a point that uh, the Americans need to vote. No matter you know what it is, they need to vote. They need to know the issues. And here we are, and this is past, and, and now we're in a new year. And uh, we still have a president. It's a, a Democrat, and that's fine. But there's still things that we need to do and understand in the state of Michigan. So we've got that going on. Then we have Ask the Pastors. We have a group of... Uh, spiritual leaders that will be uh, sitting around the panel, uh, the table, and, and asking questions. Uh, again, the caregivers will be asking questions about some of the spiritual mysteries uh, about illness and things that take place. And when our pastor panel was uh, uh, getting together, um, of course, that terrible tragedy of the little children at the school, you know, was taking place. And uh, it, it's still, uh, it, it bothers me. It's always going to bother me. Yes. It's terrible what happened to those little kids and the families. And and I always look at that, those types of tragedies a little differently uh, than maybe most people because somebody became a caregiver that day. And uh, I always say your life can change in an instant and are you ready? And, you know, life just changes that quickly. And, uh, you know, you had an interesting thing with, uh, when you were young, you told a story about uh, being in a car accident. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, that would be maybe a good story to share now about that incident. That was a true miracle what happened. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I was on I-75 uh, early in the morning, and an oil tanker had turned over, and it spread oil all down. Uh, 75 up under the Corona Road overpass and we were just coming up under there and I uh, seen the oil tanker and uh, tried to apply my brakes but the oil was already on the expressway and I looked, glanced in my rear view mirror and there was a semi right behind yeah. me and it got caught in the oil it turned over and was sliding I mean it did not turn over it was sliding down on me, and I was in a convertible automobile, and it caught me on the driver's side. And the only thing that saved me is I laid across my arm was, and got caught up under the semi, and the 
post that holds the front windshield and it was sticking through my seat. I know. I just can't believe it. And Inches. I, and I walked away from it. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Very fortunate. Very a miracle. I think every one of us have incidents like that that happen in our life, the close calls. Mm. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's other individuals that don't, you know, they don't make it through and it, it makes it very hard. But I bet your heart was really pumping. <laughs> well, that and by being somewhat young, it was my 25th birthday. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that's uh, 40, almost 42 years ago. So. Oh, my. But, uh, you know, I, being a youngster, uh, uh, I didn't realize. I mean, I knew it was very severe. You know, it was yeah. a severe a accident. And luckily, no one was, was killed or severely injured. I had a lot of lacerations uh, yeah. from the cut glass. I had a leather coat looked like somebody had taken a razor to it. Oh my goodness! And just cut it up and you know across the back. But yeah, you just don't it. know, and yeah. you look at things like that. And you know, oh, it's a true miracle. Mm -hmm. You know what happens, but you know the other thing we were talking about today. The weather is so goofy. Uh, this morning, I well, I'm always up early. You know that, and so um, I hear this noise, and I'm thinking it's a plow truck, but it's not. It was thunder. <laughs> thunder and I see lights as lightning and it's February and we're having a thunderstorm and so we're driving uh, through town and uh, we start talking about the tornado in Beecher yeah. and uh, yeah I wasn't born at the time but you know we they still talk about that tornado and it's amazing and I remember different stories of people talking about the sky being green and the sound and the birds flying away and you know, nature has a way of taking care of itself. They they warn you that uh, it, it's it's just amazing. We just don't know. I mean, could it be possible this year that we could have a tornado in this season? Is this how crazy mm -hmm. our weather system has become? Uh, it, it's just getting worse and worse. Right. And it, I just don't know what to think sometimes. It just doesn't seem to be any stability to our weather. I mean, yeah. The seasons. Uh, <laughs> coming in and out uh, like a little over a week ago we had 50 degree weather then we get down below zero right and now we're back up to almost 50 degree weather yeah in less than a two week period of time yeah and there's no stability there's something to that global warming mm -hmm. and we better pay attention to it and uh, try to try to take some measures to be able to offset that and that's it's going to be hard I, I think about the economy if we're having this inconsistent weather, how can the fruit prepare? Because it has to go into hibernation, and it's not. It, it's Fourth down, teased. Coach, what do we do? I'll tell you what oh, we do. Wait. I want you to go on the field, look for anything with an O. Wait. We will win this for Mother Russia! Coach, you just Snickers. Why is that, Chief? We've got, did you get Better. something? Yeah. About that. We had it's, aliens it's, take over here for that a was second. Weird. Ooh, they say, I, I had it, I had Russians. That, I, I had that website muted too, so that's too funny. We have somebody who wants to join our show. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We have a kind of a boring show compared to what we just heard. But yeah, you know, we were a mature group. Well, yeah. That yeah, the commercials. Yeah, we don't have any wild commercials. Oh, we could tell stories, though. Uh, goodness, we got all that. But, yeah, I'm a little concerned about the economy. Um, you know, uh, our fruit, our produce, our vegetables, uh, you know, it, it's getting to a point where we're going to have to have greenhouses make yeah. our food. Mm -hmm. And they're already working on, on synthetic food, which I thought was really weird. Uh, test tube type foods. <laughs> And it, it's coming. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. It's coming. And, uh, you know, there is something. I'm going to be attending a seminar. I don't remember what it was called, but I thought it was kind of fascinating. But they actually are growing uh, these vegetables and fruit, again, like in containers. And it's all uh, artificial. And there's they have no bugs. They have, uh, I don't know what kind of fertilizer they use. And it just seems kind of strange that... I don't think our body's equipped for something like that. I don't think we were made to, to be eating those things and digesting those things. But I'm going to go and, and learn about it. I'm very curious to see 
what's going on and and these new inventions but you know we've we've got we've got problems in this world and there's really not anything we can do about it right. because of the global warming and it's just well, we're beyond you know, I repair think that, i think there are some things we can do about global warming uh in terms of the fuels and oh right like pollution that, you know yeah mm -hmm. we can we can take some measures to try to offset some of the harm that we've done yeah uh, but it's going to take a, you know a commitment from all segments of society our government Oh Population, yeah. uh, manufacturers, and so forth. I mean, it's we've got to come together because this is getting out of hand. Yeah, the gas world. is, yeah, and it, it is getting out of hand. And um, the summers are, are going to get warmer. And, you know, we've known that for a long time. But um, I don't know. I just don't know what's, what's going to happen. But it, it's just weird that the world is changing and the scientists come up with something and you know we still have to eat we're just yeah. we're humans and we have to eat um so it'll be real interesting but i'm curious to see what this seminar is going to teach me so and i'll report what i've learned and i think it'll be very very uh fascinating and i still think about you know my husband with that artificial heart it still uh you know kind of blows my mind sometimes to think that he was alive for four years uh, on a mechanical heart. You cannot live without a heart. Mm -hmm. And yet his mind was fine, his body was failing, but his mind was fine. And he still tried to do the same things that he always wanted to do. But uh, it's a really amazing how smart the human race is mm -hmm. and uh, that they can do something like that. I know um, getting ready for this symposium, I really wanted to have the respite robots come and uh, the respite robots a lot of them look like real people they they can talk like you they look like you they have flesh they wear they can walk they do everything just like you and uh, I really wanted something like that to uh, be present but I don't think that's going to happen you know it's just they're just too expensive you know to bring in and and uh, this is a situation where we would have to pay them to come and show us you know a droid well, you, you know, know, that might be something a large corporate sponsor could help with. You know, that would be wonderful mm -hmm. to bring something like that in. Because I often wonder about uh, long-term care insurance. Um, I've had several conversations with uh, insurance agents about this. But I, don't, I wonder if the long-term uh, health care insurance is able to offer... Um, insurance to pay for respite robots in the future. So if you're a young person, 40 years old or so, and you're buying long-term care insurance uh, as a means to protect yourself later in your life, uh, that insurance may not be keeping up with the medical inventions. And, you know, I've questioned a lot of insurance agencies about that. And uh, they assure me that it will. But I wonder about that. You know, I wonder because it's not just the robots that look like a human being, but medicine's changing so much that the robotic surgeons and robotic uh, everything. I remember, do you remember the Bionic Man and Bionic Woman <laughs> TV show? That was a great show. Yeah. It's a great show. But, I mean, we're there now. That was an imaginary thing back then, but it, we are actually there. We are here and there's all kinds of really great things being done. But the surgeons, they go to school to be a doctor, and then they have to go to robotic school to learn how to operate uh, using a, a robot. Mm -hmm. And the, your body's in a surgery room, a sterile surgery room, and you know the surgeons are behind a glass uh, window, and they're operating the 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 robotic surgeon just like you would a crane yeah, or either joint yeah <laughs> which, which we're gonna make a cut here and make a cut there and you know I I imagine the robots even inject you you know with a sedative and you know it's just to me it's frightening well it's you know it's change it is change but it scares me well <laughs> You know, some of the things they do, I mean, would transplant themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I even thought, you know, when they, let's take appendix 
for instance, and you have appendicitis and you have, you know, aberration, they used to make a, a long incision to get in there and pull your skin apart. Now they just make a little slit and pump you up with air and zap it and, you know, and you're in surgery 15 minutes and you're out. And it's amazing. And it's really, uh, it, it's not that hard. But that used to be a very serious surgery. But they've learned and continued they, to learn. Oh, they've, and... they've gotten great. Even the dentists now, they're saying that they're doing laser surgeries on your teeth, which would probably be a great thing. So we are advancing uh, so fast. Uh, I can't even imagine. Just these cell phones. Like, you know, I've had a real hard time in the last couple of weeks because my cell phone is totally broken. And um, I'm having a hard time communicating. You know <laughs> And I like to communicate, but my I have my uh, internet's down, everything is down, and I'm back to living in that old world. And I I I am admitting now that I enjoy the high tech world, and I really need to to get more advanced and with what I know. But it's aggravating to other people because they can't get a hold of me. And uh, but that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Everything high tech, everything, and. Uh, I know Verizon uh, Wireless, um, they have a phone to share at the symposium for caregivers that have family members that live in assisted living homes or something, and uh, it's a voice-activated phone. Most phones will do that anyway if you command it, but this is particularly for uh, the senior population, which I thought was really great. And so I'm very excited to see where Verizon, you know, is is going with their inventions and um, it's just I just can't even imagine. Maybe we, one day we'll have a, a transmitter or something programmed in our body or something, you know. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's going to be real interesting to see how that works. But um, to me, we're, I'm in the fascination stage, you know. And I remember when my father um, uh, was watching TV when uh, man landed on the moon. Mm -hmm. And he just thought that was one of the greatest things. That and the television were the two greatest inventions or, well, events in his life. He thought that was just something else to see someone land on the moon, which you knew about when, uh, uh, who was the astronaut uh, that uh, landed on the moon and was talking about the neighbor, um, what was that called? Oh, good luck, Mr. Gorski. Do you remember that? No. Uh, John Glenn, when he no. landed on the moon. Well, and, well, John and Glenn didn't land. A Glenn, was it Glenn? I, no, he's, it, he's the first one that made the orbit around the Earth. Okay, the one that uh, made that statement. Neil, uh, that was Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. Uh, yeah, I should know that because the school we went to at, at Kersley, they built that school and named it after him. Yeah, it was him. And, and he landed on the moon. Um, he said, good luck, Mr. Gorski. And, and what that was is... Um, when he was a young boy, he was playing baseball in his yard, and um, the the baseball went over the fence into the Gorski's yard, which is his neighbor's, and the ball landed under the window, so he went to pick it up, and he heard Mrs. Gorski say, sex, you want sex? He says, you can have sex when the kid next door lands on the moon. <laughs> and so he becomes an astronaut, and he... He lands on the moon, and he steps on the moon, and he says, good luck, Mr. Gorski. That's a true story. That's a true story. That's a good one. Isn't that funny? Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> and I, it, you just don't know. So Mrs. Gorski, she's a, she was a prophet, I think. <laughs> so yeah, we'll never know about the Gorskis, will we? <laughs> But a lot of those those things, it's just amazing. Sometimes you sit around and you get to hear and talk stories. And I think storytelling is becoming um, a lost skill. Yeah. Because we're into text. In fact, John was saying earlier when we were coming into the studio uh, that, of course, my phone broke and I had no way of communicating with him. All oh, my numbers are in that goofy phone. And so anyway, I... Uh, I got here late. We were caught in the store, and uh, you know it was slow, slow day. A lot of customers. You know the typical thing. 
and uh and uh, we were talking about texting and and John doesn't like texting either and I don't text no, do I, I. yeah I read them but I, I don't I don't I don't answer back but I think I'm going to have to and uh this incident with my phone has really taught me that you know I I really need to to stop being a baby and and just <laughs> learn learn about it and, and come up to the system and uh you know just get with the program but uh I, there's a lot of people that don't text. I'm one of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, I'll talk to someone. Yeah, I, I like communicating. I like hearing a voice. I figure I still have ears, so I want to hear, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that kind of thing. But uh, so a lot of stuff's going on in our country. Yeah. Uh, right here in Michigan, we've got a senator that's uh, reached his term limitation, and Senator Gleason now is going to. Uh, be our, well he is our Genesee County clerk and uh, so he has uh, given up his seat and there are quite a few politicians that are going after his seat one is Woodrow Stanley and one is Jim Ananick I'm not sure who the others are but uh, it's going to be a very very interesting race but whoever uh, the voters choose we're going to have an outstanding senator and uh, sometimes that makes it hard because we have two qualified, highly intelligent uh, service leaders. And uh, we just wish them uh, luck. But again, you know, it, it's your Times voter to get out there and support your candidate and know what the issues are and uh, make sure that happens. And I believe the election will be in May, special election, because there were some questions about the symposium. I think they will have a uh, primary in March. A primary in and, March, and okay. And the general election between candidates from the various parties okay. will take place in May. A primary. I know when I spoke to uh, the offices in Lansing, they hadn't set a date yet, so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, but you know, but I, I had a very nice uh, compliment from uh, the state of Michigan, and they uh, thanked me for what we are doing with the Institute and trying to get this symposium up and running and make sure that the our citizens in the state of Michigan know what their resources are and I thought that was a, a very wonderful thing uh, to tell me and so I thank you for uh, doing that and this was from the office of Jim Ananick I thank him for that um, and I appreciate the support because I know we us caregivers need a lot of uh, support. It's just a hard job to do what we do. McLaren Hospital is going to be um, releasing or opening up their hospitality house, which is going to be a real exciting thing to do. It's going to be uh, somewhere near the main hospital in Flint, and that will be a wonderful uh, facility. And I believe it's for individuals that have a terminal illness and the caregivers get to come and stay at this hospitality house and, uh, you know, they have everything they need. And they go to their treatments, I think, across the street. I'm not exactly sure how they've worked that out, but it's a wonderful uh, project and i um, very happy that some of these things are, are happening for the caregivers. And uh, there is a need and uh, it's great that, that they're starting to move on it. Um, so that's really a good thing to do. So, what are some um, of your uh, you know, future plans with the uh, caregivers themselves? Uh, you know, I, we've talked about the uh, pampering the mm -hmm. caregivers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had our, this was sad. Uh, we've been planning these pampering the caregiver parties for six months, and so we're going to start them in January, and we did. We had it in January, and I missed it because <laughs> I got sick, and I missed it. But I want to thank all the vendors and the sponsors for coming. I, I know uh, what we did is we um, we uh, asked different businesses to come in and sponsor a table, and they could decorate that table any way they wanted, but they had to have place settings for eight people. And the caregivers then would come in, and they could sit down at these tables and enjoy themselves. And so we let the companies cater to them and give them a, a, a day, a special day to themselves. So we had uh, Compassionate Care, we had A1 Hospice, we had Lent Chocolates, we had Essential Oils, we had Mary Kay, 
then Jaffa products. Um, trying to think who else we had. We had quite a few people. I can't. We had a massage therapist there. Um, I know I'm forgetting somebody, but I want to thank all of them for participating. There were about 30 people, and I want to thank my staff for the outstanding job that they did. Uh, I had to come in the morning and open the building, and I was so sick, but uh, that's as much as I could do, and I went home, and I was sick for almost two weeks. But uh, they did an outstanding job, and everyone enjoyed themselves, so we are going to continue on and have our pamper parties uh, the second Saturday of every month. And uh, I want to thank the Knights of Columbus uh, in Montrose for allowing us to finish out our year there at their facility. So the next one is March 9th, and it starts at 10 o'clock. And we have some outstanding speakers. Uh, Community Mental Health is going to come in and talk to us about individuals that suffer from bipolar and you know, some other types of stress issues. And we have uh, our little friend Kristen that was here on the show, the health scientist. She's going to be a part of it as well. I'll be making a presentation. And again, we are asking vendors and sponsors to come on out and do what you do best and let's pamper our caregivers and they really enjoyed it. Uh, they were able to receive a full body massage. They had their hands dipped in hot wax. They had their feet soaked and detoxed their feet. They had a lesson in um, essential oils by Tina Sera and they had a beautiful lecture by Dr. Pat which is our famous flowers and bubbles and uh, she does a wonderful presentation and speaks right directly to the caregiver and helps you understand that, you know, when you become a caregiver, you're like a flower. And if the stem's not healthy, then the center of that flower is not going to be nourished. And so the petals fall off. So what you want to do is you want to understand that you are a beautiful flower in full bloom all the time. But if you allow yourself to get too tired, you don't take care of your health, you, you neglect your nutrition and things like that, your life around you, the petals she, she claims are, are very much like your life. If you have a, a unhealthy center, then the petals fall off that flower. And these petals, in a metaphor way, it's like the petals might be your family or your job or your finances or other different things. And she actually explains it like that. And the caregivers really get it. They truly understand that they need that nourishment and they need to take care of themselves. And you can stay in full bloom all the time as you're a caregiver if you know how to do that. And that's the thing. We don't know how to do that. So she does this wonderful talk to help us understand the importance of taking care of ourselves. And she was there, and I want to thank Dr. Schmidt for uh, the beautiful presentation. And she's going to come back and join us for in April for a three-hour uh, lecture. And she gets a little deeper, and she will touch our hearts and our souls and help us truly understand from a doctor's perspective uh, how important it is to take care of ourselves. And she'll offer tips and things uh, to help us along because we don't know. There's just so much to do. You know, and you, you're a caregiver currently. Yeah. And, and you're having memory problems. <laughs> and you're forgetting things. Yeah. And I remember being like that too. I was terrible. That burnout, that's the first thing that went was my memory. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to juggle too many things. <laughs> exactly. Too much on your plate. Yep. Yeah, it's a it's it's going to be great. Our pamper parties are a success, and we we um, it's a fundraiser, and that money uh, goes to the institute uh, to help with uh, the caregiver needs. So uh, we participate. You know, we ask you to participate, um, whether a vendor or just if you're a caregiver and you just want to hang out with us for a day. This is a good opportunity for you to do that. It's a lot of fun. We do know that Barry Stokes the uh, Detroit Lion will be doing some presentations for our male caregivers, and that'll be a lot of fun. So uh, it'll be, you know, talk about issues, the, the male type of issues that, you know, women aren't allowed during those conversations. <laughs> but, you know, there are some deep hurts that men have uh, that will be discussed. And uh, I know one time uh, we did a, we had a male retreat and uh, men actually cry in front of men but they will not cry in front of their wives or their children. But it's just humbling to know that 
um, you know, they have feelings. We forget, women forget they have feelings. And, you know, they're their protectors, and we tend to forget that. But amongst men, um, it's entirely different. I remember uh, Dr. Dobson. Was it Do Yeah, Dr. Dobson. James Dobson. The psychologist, he has a, a Christian show called ba uh, Focus on the Family. And they started this, um, oh, it was like a rally for men. And um, they did this great big campaign. And, they, and these men were, just men only, were brought into either a baseball stadium or a football stadium. And the men prayed. And, I, and that was a really big ordeal. And that was a great movement for things like that to happen. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibilities that uh, are circled around our, our male caregivers. And yet in society sometimes, um, we still have, a, I think, a, a traditional society where men are supposed to take care of, of the family. And men still feel responsible to do that. They want to be good providers. Um, but sometimes the women, um, you know, don't always go along with that because, you know, in our society now, it's, it's, it's a unisex society. Men and women do the same jobs and, uh, and it makes it really hard. But, you know, anyway, the caregivers needs, we're trying to reach out to the, the needs of the male caregiver. And, uh, we hope that, that, that fundraiser can be done very soon uh, we're hoping around june so we're we're excited about that uh, the symposium is is the big thing that we're excited about which we talked about earlier and uh, that's going to be a wonderful thing we uh have met with so many great uh businesses one which was a furniture store uh has now turned a furniture store into an antique mall I and mean, i thought this is a really neat concept rather than have an, an auctioneer come in and auction off mom or dad's home, you know, and all the belongings in it, you can actually take their belongings to this consignment shop little by little and put it there and let it stay there and then people can come in and buy it. And it, it's really hard to part with some of those things. It takes time, even though uh, they might just be things and you don't have a relationship with it, you have memories. And it's hard to part with some of that stuff. And I know. I've got stuff. <laughs> I have things, lots of things, and I need to uh, get rid of that. So uh, we are still looking for a, a couple of vendors. We're looking for uh, a vendor that has, it's a cleaning company. If you have a cleaning company or you can help families sort through the belongings in their home when they're making a transition from home to a nursing home or home to a assisted living. Uh, I know that there's some companies out there that actually counsel families and uh, to tell them what they should take uh, to the new home. Uh, so we're looking for companies like that to come to the symposium so that our families can, can uh, you know, get in contact with you. And they need some help. They don't know always what to take. I know one family uh, we had when I was working um, made this move. And the mom moved out of her house into assisted living, but they brought everything from the house to the apartment. And she became overwhelmed. And uh, they just need a few things, usually fours, usually four cups, four plates, four forks, four knives. They don't really need anything more than four. Uh, but it is, it's, it's a very traumatic thing to do. And so we're looking for companies. If you have a cleaning company and you'd like to participate, please let us know. I'm going to give you my new phone number since my old phone is broken. And so <laughs> until we can get that taken care of, but you want to reach me at 810-288-7325. And don't forget to check out the website at ndcaregiver.org. And if you're interested in participating at the symposium as a sponsor or vendor, go to uh, caregiverconvention.org and you can get all the information that you you would need. Um, watched a, a, a video on chocolate. That was really interesting. Chocolate from Switzerland. Creamy, delicious, 
chocolate. I never knew that, you know, a good chocolate has a sheen to it. And if you, it, it, it's supposed to snap. It's not supposed to bend. It's supposed to snap. And it's supposed to have a strong aroma, which we knew that, you know, about chocolate. But uh, I love chocolate. I yeah, yeah, and it, and I I know, didn't know this, and so lint chocolate is the chocolate that you know I watched the video on that, and it's really fascinating. Um, they made the molds, and they made they invented the truffles, and it's delicious. It's very creamy, and uh, they have all kinds of goodies. And if you know of anyone that sells lint chocolate, you should order some for Valentine's Day because they have some really great things. Uh, out there very expensive chocolate but delicious i can imagine so and rich <laughs> is that spelled l-i-n-d-t -E mm -hmm. yeah, i think i see those yeah oh my I goodness it's trend. delicious just delicious those truffles i i gave a few to my granddaughters and of course they wanted one of every flavor they have a peanut butter filled truffle and a a white chocolate with a white chocolate middle and then a dark chocolate and a milk chocolate but the peanut butter was delicious and I'm not crazy about peanut butter too much but it was really good and uh, there's all kinds of um, ways to buy that chocolate now they've turned it into a distributor type of a program so if you are uh, want to sell chocolate at home parties you know you can do that and you can make some good money and you sell outstanding product and uh, it's just really interesting I didn't know chocolate had such a history <laughs> You know, and, and the Easter bunny, oh, okay. <laughs> the chocolate foil cover bunny is uh, quite popular. But they have a cookbook out now and just all kinds of really neat things. And then I learned that they were talking about the taste buds on your tongue. And that the sides of your tongue are, uh, you pick up sour flavor. And in the back of your tongue, it's like bitter. And at the tip of your tongue... It, your taste buds, they're there so you can taste something sweet. And that just kind of reminds me, if you're a cook, I'm a cook. You know, if, when you were little, did you ever take the beater from your mixer oh, when you were little? And yes. you stick your tongue out, yeah. you know, just the tip and you lick it, you know. And, and it just it never occurred to me <laughs> that the taste buds on your tongue really were meant for something. Mm. I didn't. I know that um, uh, if you uh, you know if you don't have dentures or a plate, um, you know I know that there's uh, buds on the on the roof of your mouth. So if you do wear you know a plate, um, the food doesn't always taste the same because the tongue, you know, both your whole mouth right. is supposed to experience the taste of that food. And I I thought that was interesting. Yeah, so neat, 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 neat stuff. So anyway, we've got about, I don't know, about 10 minutes left, and we've been talking about just all kinds of things today. We don't really have a topic uh, to talk about um, other than, you know, the weather and the changes and what's going on and the government. And, um, you know, it, usually at this time we'd be talking about Olympics or those March Madness coming up and sports games and you know that kind of stuff and uh, you know bridal shows are coming up and and uh, all kinds of fun things and uh, you know but we really don't really have a topic today we're just talking about nothing. Well, we do have the Super Bowl coming up. So. Oh, a Super Bowl! <laughs> oh boy, football. <laughs> You know, I just, I don't even watch TV. I, I I have not really watched TV in like four years. And finally I broke down and I'm getting cable. And I will maybe watch football. But uh, I don't even know who's playing. The San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens. Mm. And they're coached by two brothers. Really? You have Jim Harbaugh and I think it's John Harbaugh. Oh my! Now that now it used to always be in January, right? And now it is it's in February the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. It'll be yeah. On the third. Super Bowl parties, you know. When I work at Myers, I do the food samplings, and uh, I remember always the Sunday before Super Bowl 
we always had a ton of food demos and they had everything they had sub sandwiches and and chicken wings and you know all the things that that you would have at your party and i yeah i'm gonna miss it this year i i'm not gonna be working but uh i can't even imagine but the big thing was that um it's funny to watch the shoppers for this super bowl sunday they call the holiday and uh nobody cares how much a sub sandwich costs <laughs> They don't, you know, they don't care. They go out with their beer or whatever, you know, their the chips and dips, and they just have piles of food in in their basket, and they're all gonna go and pig out and <laughs> and enjoy this game. But uh, I remember the commercials. I remember the little Bud Light commercials with the little beer bottle, and they had little T-shirts and stuff on it, and they made these little beer bottles like alive, and they <laughs> like little soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I do remember the commercials were really great, but that's big business now, those oh, commercials. Yes, yes. Yeah, I wonder how much a, a minute commercial costs now or a 30 second commercial cost. I have no idea, but I know it's up there. Yeah, millions, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they still have the Bud Bud Light like soap operas going on, right? I, really don't, know. I don't know either. Uh, yeah. I yeah. can't even remember what kind of commercial. You know, last year the commercial didn't seem that good. Okay. I know my brother and I talked about that. Oh. Just one or two that were. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even recall which ones they were. Yeah, it, that is such a clever marketing scheme. <laughs> I mean, football is is a favorite sport anyway, but then you start adding these commercials and, and <laughs> you know, and it it's almost like I remember this movie with Alan Alda, and it was the same, play, same time next year, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And he he was a character. He played uh, him and this this woman would have a one year affair, and they would always go back to the same place, the same hotel, and it was always same same place next year. And uh, I I don't remember, I think it was Madeline Kahn that played the female. And one time she came in and she was expecting she's like seven or eight months, you know, along. And I remember that that was a funny scene. But it says these commercials they remind me of something like that, you know. They pick up where they left off last year, but uh, you know uh, it, it's the same with the um, Rose Bowl parades and things like that. And they start making the floats the very next yeah. day oh, and yeah. uh, the designing, and and that's just amazing to me. And um, there's some really great traditions in Michigan mm -hmm. and great tra traditions in the United States, and uh, it's just amazing to see the, how the intelligence behind that uh, and, and the mechanics in those, some of those floats oh, and... Yes. The design work that goes into yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and I think, I, I gotta wonder, uh, I wonder how much of that uh, innovation uh, was created in Flint because of our factories here with our automobiles and, you know, it's just the engineers are just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I have never heard of reference. No. <laughs> I remember uh, when 9-11 occurred, and uh, I guess Flint was uh, one of the cities that was like a, an area, yeah, to be targeted, and I couldn't understand why. And, and then I had learned later that uh, there were plants under the ground that made tanks. I it were like a real secret. But that, that, I don't know if that was true or not, but... Well, I used to work, uh, I worked for a year out at Old Chevrolet on Chevrolet Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I know you could go from Plant 4 to Plant 5 up under the street. You never had to come up and, you know, walk. Right. You could go right up under the street. So, I don't know what, you know, that lens... Classified, so. yeah, <laughs> classified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. We were driving through Flint today and, and how Flint has changed. And uh, some of the big, beautiful homes are still there. And they're solid, beautiful brick homes, pewter homes, uh, still just as beautiful. They've always been. Um, it's just this time of year. Just the time of year. It's kind of kind of <laughs> gloomy out there. Yeah, this is a bad... I This... this Today reminds me of the month of March. 
and everything's sloppy and muddy and everything looks bad and you know it, it just looks bad that's the month i was born in so. yeah yeah it just looks bad yeah but you know it's just one of those things but i sure hope that uh we have some decent crops this year i know our cherry season was was ruined last year got too warm and then yeah, cold the corn too didn't it? yeah yeah, yeah. Corn is yeah. so many different things. Yeah, not good. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. You know, I uh, I uh, had attended an event this this week, last week, and um, I was reminded about the little experience at the respite ranch about the cars getting stuck in the mud, and <laughs> and uh, they said, "So how are you doing?" He said, "You mud slinger." <laughs> 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 I didn't even know the cars got stuck out there. I, I was walking a nurse out. She was the last person to take a tour of the respite ranch, and I'm walking out to the, the field where the cars were parked, and I see this big uh, truck, this ram pickup truck stuck in the mud. And I see Dr. Chatfield on his tractor with the chain and another individual helping him out, and they're connecting the chain to the bottom of this truck, and Rob's pulling this big truck out of the mud, and they're, the guys are just cracking up laughing, having a good old time, barefoot, they're in their suits, their pants are all rolled up, the ties are off, it's, and they're having the time of their life, and they still are talking about it, mm. and I was so embarrassed, <laughs> but they had a good time, but that, talk about a storm coming on suddenly, just like in a caregiver's life, uh, and I imagine we're going to have some of these storms this year, but uh what made me think of that is that the cherries and, and you know, the crop up in up north, um, when we had the event at the respite ranch for the chamber, um, it was sunny and in a second we had a hailstorm. Not a rainstorm, but we had lightning, thunder, wind, rain and then hail, and everybody was running to their cars and by the time they got to their cars, the storm had passed. People are wet, laughing, getting in their cars, and taking off and getting stuck in the mud. <laughs> but they had a good time. Yeah, the fascinating thing was that the weather held off until the event was just about Yeah, I had just finished my last words. <laughs> just, and the storm appeared. It was just so weird. And uh, But they had a good time. But I was so embarrassed about that once I learned you know, what had happened. I was so embarrassed. And uh, I learned that it was really uh, a good time. And you couldn't have planned a better event. So we've been asked, though, to have another uh, event at the Respa Ranch uh, for 14, but not a lunch, but, you know, a dinner. Uh, so uh, that's something to, to consider. Um, so that was nice to know that. But the, the people had a good time, and they got to see the home and, uh, and see what it was all about. And it's just a beautiful facility. Yes, and, it is. and Dr. Chatfield... Uh, in the fall, went and put 2,000 fish in the lake for the male caregivers to come out and fish. And there's, uh, I don't know, bass. I know Dave, you were out there. Yeah, there were bass and uh, rainbow trout and minnow. What were the little fish? Minnows? Pike? No, not pike. They're too big. Uh, oh, he put catfish out there. Boy, those things are funny looking. They have a mustache. Taste yeah. <laughs> they taste good. Do they? I don't know. Oh, they I don't know. There are, I don't know how many different types of fish he put out there, but oh, I'll tell you, we have pictures of them. And they were in individual buckets. And there were some fairly good-sized ones and then some little babies. But, uh, yeah, you know, you had to warm them up in the water first and then you open the bag and then they got to go in. But they didn't want to swim. They just wanted to stay up by the shore. <laughs> you know, but you know, I'm sure they're out there swimming away and and that. But oh, I don't know how many fish, different types of fish. But I would imagine not maybe this year, but the next year, they'll have uh, some really great opportunities to fish out there on on the water and the lake and stuff. So how much time do we have left, John? About five minutes. Five minutes. We have five minutes left. So next week we'll have our guest. I did a dumb thing. I lost my calendar. Well, you, I know. You probably just I'm having it. memory problems. <laughs> I I bought a brand new calendar 
and I thought I was uh, doing something good. I thought I was ahead of the game, so I bought a calendar in December and started putting my dates for the guests to be on the show in the book. And I have people already scheduled to the end of February, and I cannot find my calendar. And everybody's phone numbers are in there, and I cannot get a hold of my guests. So uh, I apologize. It was just an, a bad thing. My phone breaks. I have no internet, and I have no calendar. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> But things like that happen. I can't imagine what it's going to be like if, if we have a blackout. Mm. We have some frustrated people. You're right, kidding me. Yeah. Frustrated because we're so used to having everything available to us. Um, you know, I guess every home should have a generator. <laughs> yeah, that, that could really come in handy. Yeah. That's something I've contemplated the last couple of years. Really? Every now and then we, we get a, a power outage, maybe last for some hours or, or a day or something like that. So, And some of my neighbors have them, but that, you get, it really is handy. Yeah. I think that, that would be really great. I know uh, they're not real expensive. No. It's a, a worthwhile investment. Yeah, me. probably. It might be something we should consider when uh, the Institute gets their building. Right. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. we could do some nice things there. There's all kinds of uh, emergency things that we could do if somebody loses their power. And I remember being in that situation when, when Joe was alive and uh, we had nowhere to go. And so you know, it would be really something to think about. But, you know, it's a good reminder for you out there, your, the viewers, uh, if you have a generator and you have, uh, you would open your home up to somebody that could come in and, uh, you know, stay in your home until their power gets back on. But um, I know we invited Consumers Energy to come to the symposium. I'm not sure if they will come, but we did invite them because that, um, you know, there's some issues with, right. and there's some misunderstandings about uh, power shutoffs, mm -hmm. you know. So... Uh, hopefully they can come and shed some light on some of the truths and the myths that exist. But I know I ran into a problem, you know, and I didn't know what to do because I didn't have the answer. So, you know, hopefully that can happen. Yeah, that'd be ideal if they could show up and, you know, have a presence there and be able to answer questions and so forth. Yeah. And in the past, I've known consumers to participate in forums like this. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other thing is I think it's real important to know what your blood type is. And I know you know what yours is, but... No, I don't. You no, know, I mean, I knew what mine was when I was expecting children, but now I don't remember. But I remember when I lived in Milwaukee, uh, you know, I was given a card, and I was told by my doctor, you keep this with you at all times. Uh, I think I'm B something, I don't know. I I'm probably check. abnormal. I'm probably anemic right now. But <laughs> I had to check with my doctor. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I think that would be really good. I, I thought the Red Cross would be able to come in and, and poke your finger and people could find out what their blood type was. That's a simple thing. I mean, it, and I never realized that, did you know, that giving blood is an actual organ donation? Mm -hmm. And we need blood. Blood is an organ. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Chatfield gives blood all the time and uh, stuff. So we got, we're about going over one more minute so we got one more minute to go and i just want to thank you and uh for listening to us chat about nothing this this show but i will hopefully find my calendar and we'll get our featured guest on the show but uh if you have any questions you'd like to participate in the statewide symposium on may 18th at the birch run expo center in birch run uh, please contact me at 810-288-7325 or go to the website, which is caregiverconvention.org, and you can sign up online. If you would like to send uh, a check in with that registration, you can mail it to NDCI at P.O. Box 208, Swords Creek, Michigan, at 48473. So in the meantime... We hope that you're taking good care of yourself. If you have any questions or you need anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us because we are here for you. And so with that said, we wish you a good week. We will see you next week, and uh, we promise we'll have some different guests on the show. Thanks for listening. You have a good week. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.